everyone. I'm going to give this a couple seconds before I start so I don't get cut off. Hey, it's Acoustic Steve-O, the human patriot, coming to you from the Cryptoverse. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep saying that, coming to you from the Cryptoverse. I'm not so sure I live in a Cryptoverse anymore. I'll get to that, but today we're going to be doing some poetry readings, uh, reading from my Poetry 365 um, that I'm doing this year. I'm writing a poem every day, and I did my long poem the last time I did this called A Tale of Acoustic Stevo, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of try to catch up to where I'm at. So I'm not sure how long I'm going to go because there is quite a bit of um, actual days that have elapsed since I finished the uh, tale of Acoustic Stevo. So I'm going to try to get a chunk of it done, though. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and make sure my live stream's coming through here. Let me refresh this. This is the Brave Browser, by the way. Um highly suggest everybody getting it for their their phone and their computer um, what it does is it it's a privacy browser and you can do a bunch of cool things with it uh, I don't really like how that thumbnail came through I can fix that later though it's all good um, anyways I'm pretty sure I'm streaming I'm gonna go ahead and say hi in here real quick And then I'm going to go out of here and get to my actual thing. It says, um, it's kind of weird because it, usually it would show me. So I'm like two minutes into this and I don't even see. Let me see. Here. I'm going to try something. Whoa. Okay. Um, oh. Woo. <laughs> I'll come back to this. I don't want to waste too much time with that, but I'm going to go into my drive and pull up my uh, poetry. Ugh. Okay. want to get out of that. Oh. Files. There we go. There we go. All right, so there's my poetry 365 file on my drive. Somebody hacks me, they can steal all my poetry off my Google Drive. Please don't do that. That'd be bad. Then again, life would go on. As it always does. Oh yeah, hell's not a place. I'm not reading that poem, but just so you know. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to my Poetry 365, uh, the end of Tale of Acoustic Stevo, and just start reading. Maybe if I... Ooh, I'm going to wait on that. I don't want to force quit out of there. Um, I wrote a longer natural law poem that I did in segments, so if, maybe if I get to that... Um, if it hasn't, if it's been a, a long session, I'll stop there or I'll go through that and then stop. I'm kind of getting there. I know I'm getting to the close to the beginning. All right. Ah, here we go. There's Teo of Acoustic Stevo stuff. And that's the last one. So here we go. I'm going to move myself over here. Alright. This one's called Everyday Babylon. The moss man no longer bids on charities of little kids. He's sunk into the background now. The prow is laid behind the brow. Yet he gobbles up the matrix sticks. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And busts them all to little bits. He shakes them in his cloud, in his cold-gloved hand, 
Casting ribs upon the land. Casting ribs upon the land. So are we the suckers? Oh my gosh. Come on, dude. Are we the fools? Will we turn our children into ghouls? Do we ride the hours through the day? Can we ever get away? Can we ever get away? The orphaned black is pulled around. The trow of surrogates cannot be found. The luxury is falling down. The mob mentality is crowned. We wake and leave our beds to find that in our waking we are blind. The woken trumpet is a dud, spewing forth abhorrent fud, spewing forth obnoxious crud. The forward march is soon to end. Will we spend it with a friend? Will you start it all again? Have you left them to defend? The dead ideas of deadened land. The dead ideas of a deadened land. Alright. This one's called Love Potion for Humanity. Imagine light taking flight from open hands. Dreams of care and hearts of hope fill the garden with blooming love. Embrace the chance, draw near to life. Enhance the dawn, prolong the night, so moonlight falling and golden beads will wash the heads and fill the cups, increasing love, increasing love. Alright, this one's called Let the Darkness Disappear. In the hearing of a word, often not is understood, for the standing is not sound. Give me a second, I got a loud ass outside my window. There, he's gone roll it back down. I got all these little bugs flying in though, so I, uh, it's like a compromise. When you drive a truck, they give you this thing for your fuel bonus, right? But a lot of times it means you can't idle your truck. And I like to get my fuel bonus. Sometimes it means rolling your window down because it gets way too hot inside of a truck. And then you're um, often inundated by bugs, which sucks. And it's kind of like a give and take type thing relationship with do I want my fuel bonus or do I want to deal with bugs so right now I'm dealing with bugs uh, I don't know I know they're they're not the biting kind so those are the only really the ones that I care about the ones that like fly on me these kind of don't so not that big of a deal I'm gonna start over on this I apologize let the darkness disappear in the hearing of a word, often not is understood, for the standing is not sound. Sometimes words are upside down. But if meaning is intent, it does not matter how they're bent, for they can be straightened out, no matter what they are about. Be patient with the ancient texts, and seek the counsel of your mind, because the lessons are intense, but all will be revealed in time. The best way to find the truth is to question if love is there, for fairness of the heart is clear. So let the darkness disappear. Yes, let the darkness disappear. All right, this one's called Wake Them Up. The kindness shown is the gift. Patience and love conquer the death. Love hard into the others. Let them feel the depth of your heart. Make the most of your awareness. And do not give up on your brothers, sisters. They may be sleeping, and you may feel alone. But you are not. They will awake in time, if you keep gently shaking their exposed being. Don't give up. Wake them up. Alright, this one's called Government Batteries. <laughs> when walking through the trees, I find a friend to shoot the breeze. We laze and skip rocks at the sun, neither caring what's begun. We blaze away our saddled life, pretending we don't feel the strife. We reconcile a plight of such and do not try to make too much. When we depart, our hearts are made, into the grasses we do slave. We know as much, but act like fools, so that we don't turn into ghouls. Weary, but still loving peace, we draw the shade on our disease. This thing that sucks our time away, this enemy we keep at bay, this one we slink to every day, this enemy that lines our grave, this scraping by 
to which we slave. This government grows fat and proud while we forever push a trow. This government of guns and might that maybe one day we will fight. Maybe one day. And that doesn't mean with weapons. Unless you consider your mind a weapon, as I do. This one's called Jacob's Rhyme. My son won't give me space today. He just won't seem to go away. I tell him that I'll eat his face. But he will not make post haste. So I tweak his ear to demonstrate that I'm not kidding, but I write. Yet he is bored now, so he's gone. That was my intent all along. And now I miss him by my side. Oh well, I'm sure he'll trickle by. And when he does, I'll tickle him. And it will all begin again. All right, this one's called Together. The bell-bottom broken kiss of my heart-matted earmuff simplified my reactive state. An orchard of clandestine moments plucked and chosen at will, at nauseam, really. How am I to prolong the inevitable chaos? You dream, and I dream, one on one, the mighty weapon be. You fly, and I fly, together in a tree. We nest upon the backs of so many, the sick and dying in their beds, and still we sleep among the many, sniffing deeply of their heads. So I propose that in this current iteration we call out loudly in our days, and wake the many as a behemoth, then mount her massive bulk and charge, for the beast of Venus, that one married to the six, is but a masquerade of death. A psychic mass hypnosis that I will not abide. I will not stick the dagger in my heart and deny the truth. That all this illusion of fear can die tomorrow if we take the steps today together, together. Alright. This one's called Two Joy. It's a three-part poem. Um, it's actually three poems, but they go together. Alright. And it, they're written to to someone that I really love in my heart. All right. The possibilities are motivated by the unique mind, each one blossoming in its own separate lie. My heart aches for the hard lesson ahead. I pray for a stunted manifestation, understanding your drive, but knowing the adversary. I am impotent in the machinations of your fate, but I will not sit. I... Uh, Actually, I could leave that. Uh, I'm going to change that I right now because it's supposed to be a lowercase. Ugh. Maybe I'll come across it again when I actually go to edit. Oh, there we go. Ah. Move my friggin' head out of the way. Hit a little lower. Ugh. Seriously. Hit a little lowercase i. Ugh. Damn, I guess my head's too close. I apologize, you guys. Alright, this is how I roll, though. Alright, so I fixed it. So now I can get out of that. Alright. I'm going to start over. Because that kind of ruined the poem. Alright, to joy. The possibilities are motivated by the unique mind, each one blossoming its own separate lie. My heart aches for the hard lesson ahead. I pray for a stunted manifestation, understanding your drive, but knowing the adversary. I am impotent in the machinations of your fate, but I will not sit idle and watch you collapse without offering you a chair and a reason for you to sit and think. You scream to the ether, but only create a void. Drop the illusion, realize that each new hour is only a brittle joint on the finger of eternity. Awake with laughter and joy. Alright. More words to joy. Grievance must, maybe not so much, maybe a dying breaking fast the worried lunch of crocodilic pals. So pounce like a puma onto an antelope. Excite the might of your foes into a frenzy then pedal back the unicycle of destiny deny not the exceptions they are but alternative derivatives on the same path through the same door with the same tiger at your foot seek slowly 
No hurried need. Make a sound trek and walk progressively closer. Accept closure, dead ends, sojourns. Peace is accessible always because suffering subsides and joy persists. Here's the last one to joy, and it's an ode. To my, per my friend Christian Joy, return to us safely. My prayers are with you. And I believe my prayer was answered. I haven't checked into it for a while, but pretty sure it was. I see your dedication inspiring, laughter, chuckles, derision, a new form of joy, an enlightened form. The curses are tranced out mockings. You feel unencumbered of delusion. But I know the truth. Joy sparkles. It bubbles up. It glows. It beams and is content. Your words speak of this contentment, but I am skeptical because I have seen it unmasked. I have seen snarls and curses, which is a sign that joy is departed. Fill your cup again and sip. Gulping causes the throat to swell like an inflated ego. If you went away from humans into nature, the joy of living might return. It seems to help it seemed to help Thoreau. Maybe this is what you are doing in a way. India is just another plot of land. If the soul encountering it has lost or vanquished all tangible joy. This is not much of an ode. But the joy fountain is in need of some repairs, yet the wellspring underneath will never dry up, and this is what I celebrate. Alright, friendship made easy. It doesn't take much to become my friend, and I don't ask permission in order to declare, declare one as such. A simple, nice word, a deed, a gesture. It's a lot harder to become my enemy, and even this state is highly mute and even that state is highly mutable for the answers are usually plain and simple so are the problems but usually people are stuck if you want to be my friend the door is wide open i am waiting patiently if the door is stuck and you need help opening it just knock let's draw forth let's draw forth encapsulate the songbird singing a hymn hosanna Hosanna indeed. Let's mount up, steeds of silver drawn in gold, Bitcoin gold. Let's solve problems, equations, and beauty lusts, leavings of a world of sound, like the ears grown and styled like clothing. We the ancient answer bearers, carrying tubs of answers to lay upon the stream of idle thoughts, where each one can come and grab as from a bin. So now... What the copper steps on, what the soldered fixes. Let each let us each have one, to go back to our rooms where we can turn out the lights and turn on the flashlights and chant, "My precious." <laughs> so it's called Lucy. Oh Lucy, my heart beats like a machine for you, dear Lucy. I've kept it in a box and attached some wires. Now I hear it ticking, and it's driving me bananas. Bananas! Oh, dearest Lucy, I dream of your red lips, their scarlet vision, biting into my psyche. I'm not subtle. Dear Lucy, I charge by the hour. My fee is your gaudy pink bobble, your inverted daffodil. Lucy! Come to me, arise with my tide upon the beach umbrella shoreline. All right. This one's called Lost Indigo Children. If I were to tell you that my mind was made up into ribbons of gold and sold at cost to a bandit with no prospects of redemption, would you allocate any time to endeavor, or would you just shrug and walk away from the chaos as if it were a discarded stuffed animal lying in the street waiting for some innocent child to take pity on it and lift it from the gutters, rehoming it in a bed shared with an assortment of cherished monuments to suburban illusion? This one's called Focus Pocus. The buttoned-up way you move your hips crystallized my lust, and I can't help but feel hopeless, lost to the never-ending schisms in your headspace. 
Please don't misunderstand me. Don't take this as a rebuff. But instead, feel it as the longing it is. Pull wide open the shadows, christening the doldrums of some lost caliphate. I know you. I know your longings. How they feed the repeat circle. How the patterns of your speech are like murmurs of the sea. They put me to sleep. They challenge me to listen. But the listening is only a half measure. For my true being sits atop it's not spelt right. Atop a mountain, millions of miles away, through space and time. I've come to meet you here, so let's palaver. Let's stop dicking around and get down to it, because I love you, and I will not fall into a well or grasp the ankle of some other man for guidance. Instead, I will be intent on your presence, and I will refrain from wandering off so much. This one's called Holes. Dayton is a strange place. My sister once told me she saw an alien spacecraft hovering over Main Street. I believe her. Her friend Matt was with her, and he seemed like a straight shooter. Also, Dayton is next to Wright Pad Air Force Base. I want to see an alien spacecraft. Something like that would be like Thomas putting his fingers through the holes in Jesus' hands. Today I grieve. Today I grieve for the dark city at my doorstep, for the dead youth in the streets, so close to home the inverted society has manifested a sickness at my window. But I will not relent to fear and bogus lies designed to curb my words, not the dead youth. No, the dead youth deserve better. All right, this is my natural law poem. It's called Natural Law Principles, and I wrote it over eight days. All right, so here we go. First part, mentalism. The thoughts we accept manifest the realities we live. Nothing comes into being without first being thought of. So choose your beliefs wisely, for they color everything. This is a gift. All we have to do to create heaven on earth is imagine what it would be like and work to communicate our vision to the aggregate consciousness of humanity. This is called the great work. Correspondence. That which is above is like that which is below. Our cells and DNA are twins to the entire universe. And the beauty without corresponds to the beauty within. We just have to understand ourselves to change reality. For deceit is not everlasting, and light shines from everyone. I have a phone call coming in. I'm going to let that finish before I... I'm going to start this part of the poem over as well. That's one of the things when you do stuff from a cell phone. You gotta deal with your cell phone. But, you know what? You do as you do with what you got. It won't always be this way. One day, Stephen Martin, the human patriot, acoustic Stevo, crypto bard, will have time and energy and everything to devote to speaking in a more precise, less, I don't even know though, I don't even know if that's what I want to do, to tell you the truth. I kind of like using these primitive, uh, primitive tools and dealing with interruptions and all that, kind of adds a little spice, so I don't even know if that's true, but I am working towards having a better setup, and I may have one one day. We shall see. I will have one one day, but I may use it one day for things like this. Or I may do things like this and do things that are more precise and have a variety. I don't know. It's going to be fun, though. So here we go. This one's called Correspondence. That which is above is like that which is below. Our cells and DNA are twins to the entire universe. All the beauty without corresponds to the beauty within. We just have to understand ourselves to change reality. For deceit is not everlasting and light shines from everyone. The dance from 
The dance of the all can harmonize for millennia if we match the energy and live truth. We create our heaven by aligning against the sickness of wrong livelihood and submission to slavery. Our society will match the individuals comprising the whole. This is the great work. Vibration. The universe is in constant motion. This is the third principle, by the way. The first one was mentalism. The second one was correspondence. Now we're to vibration. Sorry, I'm going to start that one again. The universe is constant. Is in constant motion. Death is but a, an illusion. The soul is only moves between manifestations of energy. Everything vibrates and changes, and nothing is completely still. This makes stagnation impossible because anything can defeat inertia. This makes death only a new way to transform. Understanding this blessing brings peace. Imparting this truth is the great work. Polarity. We're on number four now. Everything has a dual nature expressed as opposite poles, but reconciling themselves as parts of a whole. Nothing is truly separate, as everything has a twin, doppelgangers in kind, though seemingly different. If we live in slavery, this means freedom is also in our grasp. But we must decide to leave the point of destruction and build toward the other extreme. This is how we find the great work. Rhythm. The universe has constant rhythm, up and down, this is five, left and right, back and forth, the pendulum swings eternally. The swing is but a tendency toward one extreme or the other. We can ride each wave to our goals or move upstream, the choice is ours. Rhythm can be changed or reversed when it does not align, but it, it, or it is but a tendency. Exerting force against the sway and changing course with willpower is difficult but possible. It requires intent focus and a change of perception in the higher consciousness. Directing rhythm is the great work. We're on uh, cause and effect. This is six. Everything we experience derives from a cause. The accumulated effects of evil are slavery, strife, and fear. We, man we have manifested them. We must choose to leave the life of wrong so that in the future we can live right. Even if there is a karmic lag, we cannot escape the things we set into motion. Doing nothing is a choice resulting in slavery. Moving to the plane of causality and creating a society built on freedom is the only answer. Living on the plane of effects is living for death until the causes are righteous. Living for life is the great work. The last one, seven, is called gender. And then there's an eighth all-encompassing principle, which I have also put in this series. But this is the seventh, gender. Gender manifests on all planes, male and female, positive and negative, giving and receiving, mentoring and nurturing. We have had this concept stolen from our day-to-day -day spirituality and lives. The blade and the chalice are equal. God is both. We are both. Each individual must balance both genders in their expression. Toxicity flows in when the, uh, this understanding is missed. Teaching the wisdom of gender can unite humanity. This union is the great work. And the all-encompassing generative principle is called care, and it's the eighth. The generative principle encompasses all the others. Whatever we focus on will grow. Apathy to our current condition is tacit approval of slavery. We must accept the dark reality and care enough to take hard action, to swim against the current, to shift the paradigm, to change ourselves, to speak only truth. We must generate the great work. Alright, so I am going to 
continue on with this because I'm waiting on something. That I, let me check. I don't think it has arrived yet, but let me double check. Ah, actually, I'm pretty certain of it. So, yeah, I'm going to continue on. Even if it has, it won't matter. <laughs> I'm only 20 minutes over my break. I had to take my break anyway, so... Yeah, I'm 30 minutes into this, though, so it's getting kind of long, but I think I can sneak out the rest of my poetry and catch myself up, so I'm going to do it. Here we go. Definitely you. When the energy is wanting, and the leaves blow at my feet, and challenges are daunting, hell, some might call them bleak, then I wipe away the sadness with a brief look at your face, accepting what I can't accept, accepting it with grace. For the loves on this rock are many, and I hold quite a few, but the one I keep returning to is definitely you. Alright, this one's called A Man. A man wants love to have a home. A man wants bread and room to roam. A man wants friends to call upon. A man wants work to meet his dawn. A man has dreams that never die. A man works hard and won't retire. A man is proud of who he is. A man stands tall and hugs his kids. A man has hands to build a town. He has a will and won't back down. A man is kind and does his part. A man is known to have a heart. Good thing that women are men too, because without them nothing would do. All right. While I rock, this one's called While I Walk Around the Fair. Of the things on the ground I can think of as you, the ice, an ice cube from a cup that is melting on the pavement, a pebble, a non-distinct pebble, maybe an orphan chick fallen to the ground and forgotten, a dandelion, a blade of grass, a bit of trash, a pair of shoes, a stream bed, marshy with stagnant water, you are me, not another version of me, an unlikeness of me, a trampoline of me that shoots the objects from the ground to the stars. You are my love, and I see you in every step I take. All right. On the Epstein debacle. A lot of us knew it was coming. It was like writing on a subconscious wall, so it wasn't a surprise, nor was it worth much headspace. We were tired, tired of pointing out laws. Uh, lies, I'm sorry, but lots of laws are lies, by the way. We were tired, tired of pointing out lies, inconsistencies, breakdowns, and probabilities. <laughs> so, we sat this one out. Instead of getting caught in an eddy, we looked down the stream and continued on with our arduous tasks. For we knew the entire system was built on Epstein Island. We knew the House of Cards would not fall, and even if it did, it would be rebuilt shortly thereafter with a dozen or so unopened decks lining the corners of the table. The populace slumbered, clutching their faces to their pillows, even as the sun beat down hard on their exposed necks, even as the sweat pooled on their backsides. The hope all gone, the people all zombied out to work, to get up the next day and work, for the dollars that made the whole thing thrum. They say the mark of the beast is on the head or the hand, but this is an interpretation of ancient texts. Maybe it's a head in a hand, maybe it's the face of Washington, as you put him in the hand of the next fool. Either way, there are those of us who understand that the beast is in the details, and the details are making themselves clear, even to those doing their best to build a blanket fort. This one's called Disbelieve. Take away all ideas, each one, by wringing them out like soaked rags. Drag them away, kicking and screaming if you must. Do not do not believe, do not trust, question. Ask if what... Ask if what wants your acceptance deserves it, or if it is just a blockage, a wall, in, in front of living. Put your beliefs into practice, and if they are wisdom, they will stand forever as truth. Truth is not hard to grasp. Look in the eyes of everyone, and are they decided? If so, realize that, realize the gift that you can see incorrect doctrine. Understand that you are 
powerless to break their mindsets. That is not your job. Your job is to cast away wrong and live right. Why believe in heaven? Why believe in hell? These are projections, but God does not have to obey our perceptions. Shed, release, disbelieve. This one's called What Comes. The empty disconnection supposedly felt upon spilling the chrism is not felt by me. Relief, relaxation, creativity. These are my seeming results, yet I still question my perception. I will experiment more because males are equipped with the ability to experience ecstasy through a simple act. If this explosion was designed to disempower, why manifest this earthly experience to be so paradoxical? Seems like spiritual mumbo-jumbo to me. But I will keep an open mind and put the theory into practice and see what comes. <laughs> All right. Will we sing a woeful song? There's a war raging everywhere and everyone's engaged. The wicked want to seal our fates by stealing all our days. We wake uh, we wake to routines not our own and step out on the field. The rules are not just or upright. They merely force a yield. For those who turn us on our heads to work for fiat crap, wake up, wake up, it's all a fake, employed as one big trap. For if you woke and took your day and made it as your own, all the slaves would sit and wait for your error to be sown. But if you truly opted out and joy was in your brow, they might also question if they want to push a plow. This is the war, my friends, the only one that's going on. Will we keep losing battleground? Will we sing a woeful song? Will we relent to slavery and continue living wrong? Bite the hand that feeds death. The calling cattle of India bless the hearts of women drug into song by their favorite nephews. It's an open love, a great love, a love that abolishes murder, a love that wades into fields and picks clovers like flowers to give to a favorite niece. Oh, these children, these lovely children, are we their protectors, are we? Enough of the bloodshed, the push toward evil, not lust, but evil. The wanton desires of the heart are tame compared to the unbridled torture inflicted on our earth. Stop! Stop the sieges of ages, of men who want more, of consumerism. Stop by stopping yourself. Don't buy things that cause war. Make this a mantra. Pin it to your Twitter. Make social justice warriors squirm in their inadequacies. Bite the hand that feeds death. I dream of your light. The light in my dream sat upon my brow. With half-closed lids I soak it in. This dream of you entering my third eye, a beam of pink, a stream of sex after the fact. I wonder if you dream of me and if I appear in brilliance, or if my matter is clouded or my color is blue, or if my color is blue. I wait for clues that never come. I see your waking light. I know your waking song. It seems yellow. I wonder if my song is colored, or if it is transparent to you. Does it soothe? Does it inflame? Does it torture? Does it complicate or complement or both? I dream of your light. Do you see mine? All right. This one's called, Are You Listening, Emily? Ex excerpt from Emily Dickinson's Wikipedia page. Despite Dickinson's prolific writing, fewer than a dozen of her poems were published during her lifetime. After her younger sister, Lavinia, discovered the collection of nearly 18, excuse me, 100 poems, Dickinson's first volume was published four years after her death. Until Thomas H. Johnson published Dickinson's complete poems in 1955, Dickinson's poems were considerably 
edited and altered from their manuscript versions. Since 1890, Dickinson has remained continuously in print. The canon, is it out of reach? Do I want to abide, to dwell, to poke my way into? Can I do so, if the desire was there? Am I a reject, a fool, to be laughed at, mocked, ignored? Academia, the bridge to recognition, the burden. Why fight a losing battle? That's why I love Emily. She knows what it's like to pour a soul on a page, hoping to connect to humanity even when humanity seems indifferent. I am not bitter or lamenting, just observing reality and my own inclination to seek praise from systems, from institutions that are old and decrepit and barely present. I see the new path, and I sing a lonely song. Are you listening, Emily? All right, this one's called Divination. The dappling shadows on eggshell stucco mesmerizes my mental myopathy. Questions and answers that breed more questions. Stirring, churning, beckoning to the future. This one's called Brotherhood of the Traveling Rants. Warhead, I know you're out there, sick to the brim, frothing with hate. I will be lovehead, living in here, growing strength by loving the inept. I will swing from vines in the jungle you have created, and toss psychic grenades at your makeshift inadequacies. For they won't last much longer, our militia grows stronger, each moment we discover the next one in the chain of awakening individuals wearing the same blue jeans all right i am up to date y'all so thanks for joining me as i get up to date on my 365 challenge i hope you enjoyed my poetry or at least maybe a few of my poems if you did let me know also like share why not why not push acoustic stevo out there just Push me out there. Push out the human patriot crypto bard into the universe. Why not? Who knows what would happen if you did? I'd appreciate it. That'd be one thing that would happen. All right, everybody. Have a good one.